So it is time again for Two Dads, Six Daughters, our weekly podcast with my former co-host, my best friend, my daughter's godfather, Mark Clark, and of course, I am Tony Scott. So, the world so, famous veteran Tony Scott. The veteran that I am. Somebody described me. I did a, a, a college kid came and had to do a project, wanted to do some video with me and interview me, asked me some questions. He called me an icon and a legend, and I felt old. Well, you are both, and you're all three. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But so, good, so what's the girl? What's the girls up to, man? You they went to a Beyonce concert last night. Yeah, the girls got a super surprise. I'm talking about total surprise. Um, they got a total surprise, Tony. A uh, and and it actually was a double surprise. So I was taking my mother in law shopping around four o'clock. Allison calls like, "Yo, I got tickets to the show." So. You know, they had, we had to rush and get them ready uh, to Beyonce. Uh, they had a great time. And a young lady that you have to interview, Tony, um, she has a series, a book series called The Dork Diary. Mm-hmm. She's a very successful, best-selling author. Um, and The Dork Diaries is huge. She actually invited the girls. So they got a chance to, and that's her favorite, their favorite book. So they got a chance to see Beyonce and... Um, you know, hang out with the author of the Dork Diaries. Oh, that was cool. Uh, which is basically, it's like a diary for, of the you know, Wimpy Kid, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of, uh, but it's, uh, it's the African American author. And uh, she got a, she, you know, it was about her daughters. Uh, and uh, it's really like blown up. So, you know, definitely have to put that put that link on our on our feed. Yeah, yeah. Check that out. Check it out. And, and you, could, you should interview her. If you don't want to interview her coming up, I'll, I'll pass information. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great, man. That'd be great. So, they so had a great time. And they saw, uh, they saw uh, what's the group? Uh, um, uh, oh my goodness, the, the boy group. One Direction. One Direction a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. So they, their summer has been kind of off the chain. Yeah, man. So they went and saw One Direction, and I tell my girls and Maria, my youngest, gets just she loves One Direction, and I tell uh, Olivia yesterday about Beyonce, uh, and she was like, "Oh, I'm so jealous," you know. So. So the process has begun. Olivia's like washing her sheets for her dorm and everything and getting everything kind of situated because she's about a less than a month away from moving away from home. Not that far. 20 miles, maybe 20 miles. I don't think it's that far. Uh, to be a college student, man, your goddaughter. Oh, man, how are you doing? Hold, hold that up. Hold you know, on. so far, so good. You know, I, I, I'm going to take that week off. And uh, but so far so good. I haven't thought about it a lot, but I, I have thought about it, but not not too much, man. But it's it's just a new phase. I'm excited for. Her. I'm impressed that you got her to want to stay close. That was a brilliant but, move, my but, brother. But you know what? Let me give you a little tip on how they work. You know what I did is let me see if anybody <laughs> is is uh, I told her go anywhere you want. You want to go far away? Go far away. You know I want you to be happy. I want you to choose a school that you're going to be excited about going to. And, you know, for a while I was concerned. She talked about Chicago. Who wants their kid going to Chicago these days? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then she talked about going to University of Houston, you know. And, uh, you know, Mizzou was on the table for a while. and, and But then ultimately she, she discovered Webster and decided to go to Webster, man. So now she's going to Webster University, which is a good school. It's a great school. Yeah. But uh, it's not that far. It's here in the St. Louis area. And she's, you know, she's, she's happy. So she's, she seems to be. Well, she did ask me last week. She goes, are you making me go to college? I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean making you go? I said, you don't want to go? She goes, no. I said, yeah, then I'm making you go. <laughs> she doesn't want to go. She says that she's just not, you know, she's not, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm burned. I said, you're not tired when you go dance? No. I said, nah, y'all, yeah, I'm making you go. I'm going to make you yeah, go. Yeah, it's a whole different experience. It's a yeah. whole different experience. It's, a whole it's not, it's nothing like, you know, yeah. nothing like high school. Yeah. I mean, you know, like it. it's one of those things, man. So, you know. So I saw here in St. Louis, man, that in Fairview Heights, this man who paid, like, been paying child support in the thousands found out that the child ain't his. And he wants consequences and ramifications. Mm, mm. You know, he wants his money back. Yeah. And he's filed a lawsuit. Now, ain't gonna I, happen. it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. They, they need to have a law. And the reason how he found out was because he had waived the DNA test because he said, hey, it's my child, right? So I'll take care of my child. And she says, it's my child. It's my child. Well, it wasn't his child. And he found out because I think he had to take a DNA test because she was going to remarry. And they come for a t- DNA test come out. He ain't the daddy. Mm. So now now he's mad. Can't say I blame him. But I mean, 
you know, we got to have laws that protect men. There has there has to be ramifications when a woman does this to a man. Yeah, well, that's but that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I think, and actually, we had a, we had an associate of ours, friend of ours, and uh, you know, he uh, he went to come to a similar situation. And the thing that was interesting was in that case, in those cases, to protect the child, yes, you still have to pay. Yeah. So in other words. Uh, you know, he found out that he wasn't, in fact, the child, wasn't the father, and still had to pay. Yeah. Because I, actually, I think what happens is if they if they put you on the on the birth certificate and it's inaccurate, you may still have to pay because the state is protecting the child. So the real father gets off scot free. Then he's he's just he's, he's off the hook that way. Even if you yeah. can locate him, he's still off the hook because well, because the woman said you're yeah. the father. I'm putting you on the birth certificate. And that's just how it's going to be. So you're screwed. Well, and, and actually, I think in that case, the real father could, you know, you, you, and actually in the situation we're talking about, uh, he was able to get out of it somehow. But, Damn. oh, I know what it was. The child, oh, oh, you know what, I'm trying to think what happened because he did get out of it. But maybe, but, but at the end of the day, I think, which you, to your point earlier, I think what the court says is, hey, the kid needs to be protected. So, hey, if you're dealing with somebody and it goes, it goes down like that, whatever, the kid still needs to be uh, protected, and if you happen to be the only male around or the only person around, so the man, so be it. So the man's getting screwed. Well, but I think like I mean I understand I, taking care of the child. I understand the welfare yeah. of the child, but that's not my child. So why are you yeah. hanging that on me? Why are you hanging that on me? You know why? Well, why I think, you, go ahead. I think that speaks to uh, that speaks to what we always you know what we've always been taught when you talk about relationships with people. How we casually get in relationships with people. You can't casually get in relationships with people. Right, right. Because there are consequences, and in the, in the form of another human being, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like, I think that's what happens, you know, and we then try to break it down. Like, you say, like you say I can hang that on me, or. <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and I see the frustration in that, though, because, you know, you told me this was my child, and it's not. It's not. So I'm on the hook for this. Meanwhile, the real father is getting away and ain't got to pay a damn dime. He should be forced to pay me. You know, I mean, I I can see a man's frustration with that. But at the end of the day, I don't know anybody who's ever had that overturned. Now, I I don't obviously I don't know everybody, but, you know. But I think that goes back to the court systems, how people don't understand the court system. I think the law is ain't nobody got time for that. (laughs) <laughs> you know the court the court is not a you know what i mean it's not its job isn't to work through people's personal relationships and i think that's what happens with people they have this false sense of you know the courts are going to make it right oh no the courts don't make it wrong yeah and so it's between you and the person and once the court gets in it then it's all a mess so it's just you just what's the what's the you know at the end of the day hey it's almost like you know you know Tony, um, you know, my philosophy on that kind of stuff is all, it's like the old well syndrome. It's like, <laughs> you know, if you go into that, if you go into that dark room and somebody hits you in the head with a, <laughs> with a wrench, <laughs> you shouldn't have went in that dark room. <laughs> is, that, is, <laughs> is that what it's down to now, man? Going into the dark, don't go in the dark room. If you go into that dark room, you know you might get hit in that wrench, that old fashioned, remember those, those old fashioned pipe wrenches? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all of a sudden, I, I think of that commercial when you have cable and you, you know, don't be the fist of goodness. <laughs> don't go into that dark room. Man. So Oprah says you can't be her friend if you use the N-word. That's what she says. Oprah, Oprah says you can't Jay-Z's be my friend. friend. Huh? Jay-Z's her friend. Well. You got a whole album. Yeah. 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 You know, I saw an interview uh, of Jay-Z when he talked about the N-word. It was it was from a few years ago and stuff. And he says that, you know, his generation took that word and took all the power out of it. Then if you did that, then how come white people can't say it? <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's only activated with black folks, so it's like a... But you can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that though. You can't. You'll never. If you'll never be able to stop people, anybody of any race, from using that word. You can't. You, you not, can't. You can't govern how people. What people saying. You can't say that. You can't say. You can't say that word. You can't do that. You're being it's, unrealistic. 
I think the, I think the, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about the guy who recently just said, yeah. but um, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's so it, that word race and the N word, which I hate the N word, nigger. I'll say the word. I hate the N word. Um, it is a very just complex. Um, you know what it is? You, you can't take the pain out of race in America. Probably the world, I guess the world, you know. But because of it, you just can never, no matter how much technology we have, mm-hmm. you know, it still shows this ugly face mm-hmm. and people are hurt and, um, you know, it just, it just will not go away, you know. And I guess because, you know, that, that system that America was built on, you know, what's interesting to me is when you think about it, nigger is more, uh, well, I, I don't say hurtful, but the Native Americans got their land ripped from them. But there's not a word. Is there a word? I mean, if that word is redskin mm-hmm. or, if, you know, whatever that word is, I don't think we know what it is. So is the word right. Indian a slur? See, and that's I know that I, they'd rather be called Native Americans. Which well, is, but, but I, I, I think they, I think just like the N words situation, different groups have had different philosophies about it. Mm-hmm. And so therefore where people really stand, like, you know, like uh, living in DC, this red skin, it, you know, it, it pisses me off the whole red skin thing. I'm, I'm pissed off at black folks who support the red skin name. I'm just, I'm, I mean, how can you not be offended by that? Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a group of Indians paid off probably that was like, Oh, it's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so they, when they want to argue for it, they just bring that. They just roll that group out. Right. The you know, oh hey, we're okay with it, and then it's like wow. So you know, it just stays in play. You know? Well, you know, I actually had, I interviewed a life coach. Her name is Vasavi Kumar. She's great, man. She lives in the Kansas City area, and she's Indian, like Middle Eastern Indian. And I asked her, were you because she likes hip hop? I says, were you offended when Jay Z said red dot or feather? She said no. She goes, that's not who I am. That doesn't define who I am. I said, but you weren't offended at all. She said, no, not not at all. So, you know, I, yeah, it's it's it's. I was reading this. I, I think I told you a couple weeks ago on vacation. I was reading the Nat Turner books. Yeah, and and hearing hearing about America in in that time and and and, and how you know the, the life of of enslaved Africans meant nothing made you you know like I say take pause and be like, wow, you know. I'll never say the N word again. You know, it's kind of I think you have those moments. Richard and Pryor, then, remember Richard Pryor said that, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, then you know, give it a week, and then <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, and, yeah, and um, and I, you know, if I, I'm honest with myself, you know, see, and I, 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 it's weird because on one hand, I understand when people say like an Oprah say we should never say that word. It's 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 too painful, but and maybe it is maybe it is generational because at the same time. I will say it, you know, around my friends or to my friends or to my wife, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> your wife, you know, man? You call your wife the N word, man? I will, yeah. You know, and, you know. Now, now, would I, you know, would I admit that on a national television? No, <laughs> on this show, probably. Yeah, because nobody's uh, watching. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So, so, up. so, so, the deal today with the Philadelphia Eagles receiver, what's his name, Riley Cooper or something? What's his name? Yeah. And so he went to a Kenny Chesney concert, and he <laughs> said, "I'll fight any nigga here." Right, the white yeah. dude. Right. Yeah. So, and of course, you know, you're public and you're a celebrity. Boy, the smartphones are out there capturing every moment. If you don't know that, then maybe you shouldn't be a celebrity. Right. I wouldn't. Oh, I wouldn't know him from anybody else, though. I don't know. I just, you know, now he's going to be famous. You know, so he got fined by the Philadelphia Eagles and he issued a BS apology because, you know, he didn't mean it. No one's buying it. You know, uh, what's your take on that, man? Was he is, I mean, is he entitled to free speech? Was the NFL right to fine him? I mean, they do have a behavior clause in all their contracts. Well, that's like you said, the, the great, there, there that word again is and it's just the, the, the response on Twitter has just been crazy. Like you said, I didn't. I didn't even know who he was. He actually, I guess he was on the same Florida team that Hernandez and Tebow were on. Wow. So that's interesting. That was a heck of, so you got a racist, you got a man of God, and you got a murderer. All on the same squad. 
Yeah, yeah, man. And um, and so you know, he really has. He's done it now. Yeah. I mean, you're in Philadelphia, which is a really, you know, of all the N- NFL cities, it's a pretty black city. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, the uh, very, you know, a lot of activists and, and a lot of history, a rich history of involvement. And, uh, you know, one of the fewer c- cities that has a lot of attendance, you know, blacks in attendance. Yeah. So, they're, they're not working. <laughs> they're, exactly. not work- they're not working the game. They're actually there to watch it. He tore his drawers there, man, man. And then it's like he, he, you can never, you can, you can never come back from that. But I mean, if so- you're if you're if you're an African American teammate on the Philadelphia Eagles, do you go up to him and say, "Man, what the hell is that about?" Yeah, you know, it's. It, I think it's. Yeah, I, I think what happens. So, well, Tony, you know, <laughs> you're a person of color. Yeah. Um, I think what happens is we. I think there's a certain it's weird I think like so you're 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 Mexican I guess Mexican Hispanic mm-hmm. I'm African American mm-hmm. it seems like people of color have a certain kind of it's weird it's almost like if a Hispanic says nigger it's different than you know what I mean your white coworker says it I you know Maybe it's because there's a shared understanding of being an outsider. But when a white player, your white player or your white friend, even though he's been, you know, <laughs> at Florida and in the NFL around black players who he's heard use it and in the hip hop and the music you heard use it. If you find out your white friend said what he said, there's a part of you that feels like you don't know who this guy is. You know, who who are you? You know, and it's interesting. Some will say, well, is that fair? Well, the same thing with you, Tony. I mean, you have, a, you know, you have a lot of, I mean, you have a black wife, you have a lot of black friends. If you said, if I heard you say that, for whatever reason, I wouldn't feel the same way. I don't know. It just seems like there's a closer kinship because you're Hispanic. I don't know what that means, but. Well, that depends, you, where, that depends where you live, though, because you go out to L.A. and blacks and Hispanics don't get along in L.A. That's true. But that's black, true. blacks and Hispanics in New York get along. That's a good point. <laughs> you know, it just depends on where you are. And where you are. my understanding is this wasn't the first time he's done that. Oh, well, see, I didn't know that. Now, that I just say, for me, as a black person, if that was a friend of mine and it came out like that, then I would, there, you know, he gets the phone, he gets the check mark. Mm-hmm. My thing is, and you know, Tony, you know my technique in people. I'm very rarely disappointed or shocked with people. Right. I kind of like, I, I kind of like factor in the imperfections of us. So therefore, I'm not usually super, super crushed mm-hmm. by stuff like that. So I wouldn't have been crushed. I would just be like, wow, wow, dude, wow, Riley. I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I'm surprised by that. And I, but I, I wouldn't have been crushed. So, but very few things crush me because I think I, I, I protect myself by that. Well, that's the conspiracy theorist in you. you were just, and you're right. You're, you're probably right. Like, so we talked about this, I think, in our first episode, but we have to talk about, you know, this and how it relates to our children. I mean, I mean, Olivia's asked me before, what am I supposed to do if someone calls me the N-word? You know, and I said, well, if you're by yourself, you need to keep walking. <laughs> you know, if you're with me, you need to tell me and then I'll take it from there. You know, it just, it just depends. But more times than not, you probably need to walk away, you know, and I've always told her when you break somebody down to the point where they have to call you that word and they mean it in a bad way. I said, then they have nothing. They, the only thing they had was to call you that name. Your mere presence has broken them down to the point where the only thing they have is that one word. Winning. Yeah. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> I mean, but your girls are younger. So has it ever come up? Do you talk about it? Did you bring it up? Did they bring it up? No. We haven't talked about this one, but... Um, I mean, have y'all ever talked about the N-word? Well, you know what? I guess we really haven't. Because I mean, you live, you live, they go to a mostly white school, right? Yeah, we talk about race. I think I think we talk about race, but you're right. We really haven't talked about that. Hasn't, that one hasn't come up because I think it's weird how in a uh, what's the word I want to use in a you know how the society where people don't want to feel you know I think there there are these dynamic dynamics when it comes to you know to race and, and white people. Uh, it's probably more it's probably class. You know, a certain class of people does not want to be labeled as a racist. Mm-hmm. They may they may be racist, but they don't want to be labeled as that. 
Well, well, I'm not ready to label the entire white race as racist. But so what, I, what I'm saying is, so like where I came from in Springfield, right? The uh, Springfield was a town where my white friends considered themselves, you know, to be you know good citizens, good people, and not racist. Mm-hmm. And if they called them a racist, they would be offended by that. I've seen people, uh, you know, this and, and this Tea Party kind of energy and the right wing energy where I, I don't have the feeling that they, they don't care if you feel that way. Mm-hmm. If you call them a racist, they say, well, whatever. They don't think they, you know what I mean? So the energy that I grew up with in a, in a predominantly white town, it was a town that did not want to be, it wanted to be considered fair. And, and, and I think it's the same way with, with the kids, my, my, my kids go to school with. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they would be outraged if, if somebody said that at the school and, and her, their peer group. So that's but, I mean, but, you, but you know what's going to happen. Eventually, oh, yeah. it's going to yeah. happen, right? I mean, there's no way, yeah. there's no way dodging that. It, it may not happen yeah. now, but it may happen in the twelfth grade. It may happen in college. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we so. talk about we talk and we talk about that. We talk about race all the time. I guess specifically the N word we haven't, but race itself, we're always talking about it. So it's kind of like giving them an understanding of these dynamics. You know, giving them an understanding of what it means. You know, it's really interesting. You really do see how. You know, when, you know, you don't want to be, you, you know, you know, you, the perception of who you are, as African-American girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about that, you know, the, the perception of, you know, when you're that minority in the group. Well, Olivia and Maria, same thing. Like you're the only the only kid of color there. Mm-hmm. And so, you, you know, as parents, you almost I think we probably overcompensate in making sure that they always look a certain way and they're presentable and they act a certain way. We're very, we're very conscious. We don't, they don't just leave the house looking crazy. Right. <laughs> Ever. Like, Ever. especially, I know mothers, I think mother, like Allison, oh no, <laughs> you know, their hair has to look right. They yeah. have to, and it's like, a, you can't just send them out. You know, I think dad sometimes get in trouble for that. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, she looked fine. No, she did not. You know, <laughs> like, you know, you know yeah. that's, a, that's a part of it. Yeah. That's a part of it. Yeah. And it's real, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, cause you're, you're, you're representing something. And it's, it's, it's again, it's kind of sad that it has to do that, but it is. It is. It just well. is. So yeah. George Zimmerman got pulled over today, man, in Texas uh, for speeding. And he told the police, I have a gun in the glove compartment. And they let him go. They didn't even write him a ticket. <laughs> man, he's, he's been in a lot of action yeah. since he's, that's since his so, trial, man. So, of course, wait a minute, you know, wait a minute Tony, you see that? You, I saw the conspiracy pop up after we had that conversation. What? That it was a setup? Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was bo- that was bogus, though. That was just something somebody started. That wasn't real. That wasn't even real. I checked it out. That wasn't real at all. So, I mean, what happened was real with the rollover and all that. But people say, people started, somebody posted a story about they found out that it was a setup. Nah, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't what it was. But George Zimmerman, okay, so the, when you get a gun permit, and I'm assuming he has a carry permit, but that there's no such thing as a national permit. So my question is, how did he, how would they, they let him go? He didn't have a permit for Texas. How did they let him go? I mean, why did they let him go? I mean, I, I mean, why did they take the gun from him? Did they take the gun from him? But man, a lot of people, when I posted that story on our Facebook page and people were not happy about that. They were yeah, not it, happy. It just seems surreal. The whole thing is just so weird that he's just driving around, man. It's like, wow. Yeah. You know? And he, they say, where are you going? He goes, no place in particular. And, then he, and I think... Uh, I read one account where he like told them, you may know who I am, you know, recognize me and all that. I think he told them and then when he gave him his name and then, you know, they ran his name. He had no warrants. So they let him go. You know, I mean, what else can you do? He ain't got no warrants. You know, he ain't wanted in Texas, you know, and but he had a gun, but they let him go. I don't usually in Texas. That don't happen. That's your own. Especially, that's your especially, if, ground. especially if you look like you or me. Yeah. You know. Well, he's a star, though. Yeah, Some. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I also read there was a GOP uh, politician, a black woman, who says that Sabrina Fulton, Trayvon's mother, she needs to get over this uh, pretend race war that she has started and move on with her life. Like, wow. That's a, where do they find these people, man? Wow. Wow. How do you sleep at night? How do you do that? This woman lost. No matter, no matter what, even if, even, even if Trayvon was the thug they said he was and he was murdered... She still lost a child. That still hurts. That still hurts. You know. I don't know where they find these animals, man. I said it. I said it. I called them animals. 
I mean, they, they, they're just willing to say anything. It's very interesting, you know. It's uh, it's very troubling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They saw. I saw this. I saw a poll, and it said that um, you know it was, it was like you know about uh, uh, the people who felt that this trial was about race, mm-hmm. and it said some of the numbers were like you know African Americans like sixty something percent felt it was about race. Hispanic was like forty six percent. And whites, it was like 26%. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, ah, less than a third. But then a lot of you know, about race. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they, they, they don't deal with race on a level that people of color do. Right. You know? We have to assimilate to them. They don't have to assimilate to us if they don't want to. You know? They yeah. don't have to do that. So it's one of those things, you know? And it's 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 really too bad that, you know, we, we live, people say it's 2013. One of the things that frustrates when people say it's 2013, we shouldn't be living like that, but we are. And the other thing, when people when something happens, something racist happens, I ain't surprised that happened. I ain't surprised. Well, you should be surprised. That's the point. You should be enraged about things. I ain't surprised. You're just trying to sound cool. You should be. You should be surprised. In 2013, you should be surprised. That's a, this is horrible. This is all. Yeah, well, I don't get that. About. I just want to smack them, man. It's like, come on, man, get out of the funk. Well, I tell you, but and, and then back to the, you know, like the. Uh, uh, Michael Eric Dyson had a great point that I'm like, wow, I never, I never hear, you never hear that. Michael but, Eric Dyson, but, the one who you, what did you call him? You call him yeah. when, when you interviewed him one time. You call him a, a opportunity, a, and I call him opportunity. <laughs> How did he take that? Well, you know, I like him. I like Michael yeah. Eric Dyson, but when he did the book entitled like Bill Cosby or something, yeah, is Bill Cosby right? It was kind of like that's pretty opportunistic, you know. It's like you put it in the title of your book. Come on, man. What did he? I, what did he say to that? He, he um, we were going pretty heavy. I, I was trying to think that <laughs> between blows, I couldn't really remember. It actually, uh, no, he said, well, he didn't think it was. He didn't think it was. He thought it was, um, you know, topical. You made you made a celebrity mad. No, he wasn't you, mad. You, remember that time? Remember that time I pissed off Teddy Pendergrass? Remember that? <laughs> Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah, that's you made Teddy mad. <laughs> Teddy got. Wilshire. Teddy got. Teddy got Teddy. <laughs> Teddy was okay. Teddy got heated. I, I was just trying to ask him a question. I wasn't right. even talking about that accident. I was I was talking about something else. It was and it was in the book. I read the book. It was in the book. And he says, "I don't want to talk about that." You, he said, "I want to talk about that." You got me. Yeah, like man, you better slow your roll. <laughs> <laughs> you made that young Levon Zot mad too. When did I do that? Mm-hmm. We talked to her. She was a little. Maybe she was a little snappy. We we, we were kind of. I think we kind of joked on her because she was snappy. <laughs> She became, she became a friend of the show, but she was kind of snappy. Yeah, I snappy. You did? I, I we did that, or you and Troy did that? I thought you. I thought you did. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember that one. But I, I you just, remember talking to Ellen Levanza? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Because yeah. we started in the St. Louis. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. She she had a little funky attitude. You remember she had a funky attitude yeah. a couple times? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she wasn't mad. She was just in a funk. You know, maybe she was. She she thought she was. I thought I was gonna be on a bigger show. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, 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 hey. It's all you got here. But you run that risk. If you're a celebrity, you know, you run that, you know, you can't. I had one time, I don't know if you and I were working together. I don't think we were, but Judith Jameson, the dancer. Yeah, the dancer. For some reason, they wanted me to interview her. I was like, but for what? You know, they're like. I think, I think I was working with you. So they sent me some notes of some questions to ask her. I said, I'm not asking her these questions, right? Because they were the standard, like, you know, what would you say to aspiring dancers and all that? And I was like, I'm not doing that, okay? That's not going to happen, right? So then she was like, uh, I was asking her questions, and then she was like, we went to a commercial break. She's like, well, you got questions right there. I said, I'm not asking you these questions. And she was like, oh. And like, she walked away. What the hell do I care? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to ask you my questions. I don't care about those these pre-produced questions. That doesn't matter. She walked matter. away gracefully, though, Tony. Yeah, she, she did. She was. She was. She, yeah, she was. She was very graceful when she walked away. When she gave me the finger, it was very. It was a very graceful, manicured finger. No, she, and actually, she, she, it, she, it wasn't. It wasn't me. You're right. I wasn't with you. Okay. Then. And she no, she didn't give me the finger. She's she's too classy for that. But I was like, you know, I, I don't. She gave, you, she gave me the middle toe. <laughs> she's the dancer. <laughs> Uh, and that's a that was a brutal looking toe, man. Let me tell you, the toe, toe was longer than her her big toe, which you know what that means. That means she's a freak. She's a freak. That's what they always say. If your if your second toe is longer than your big toe, you're a freak. Who came up with that? Who who comes up with stuff like that? Man? Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> 
Teddy Pendergrass, back in the day, though, man, the ladies used to throw their panties at him. Oh, man. Unbelievable. Big nobody granny. really. And that was back in nobody, the 70s. There wasn't no thong. I mean, they, they were throwing granny panties up there, right? Cool, man. <laughs> there, were, there were no. I mean, they were throwing, like, satchels up there. <laughs> that was before. Th- so, Tony, nobody really, nobody really replaced that Teddy thing, huh, as far as the. On the that raw, level? Drowning. Um, you know, I want to say Luther, but Luther was a, wasn't as sexy. Come on, man. As Teddy. No, for yeah. women. Oh, okay. <laughs> they threw jock straps in with a Luther guy. <laughs> they threw cups. <laughs> Oh, no, man. But, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of who has been so long, man. I mean, you know, there had to be somebody after him. R. Kelly? No. No. Or he had more teenagers. Yeah. <sighs> man, I don't know. Dude, I was driving in I was driving in today listening to satellite radio, and they played Sherrick. What? Sherrick. Remember Sherrick? No. You remember Sherrick? Sherrick was the brother who had the black, he had the mullet, the black guy with the mullet, you know, it was a p- business oh, yeah, in the front, yeah, party yeah, in the yeah, back, yeah. and he had a song called yeah. Just Call. Yeah, you Sherrick. Know? Yeah, he was yeah. a good looking guy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Wow. They played, I was like, wow, who has a copy of that? Sherrick, that's like that, um, yeah. Oh, man, Sherrick. You Sherrick, right? I mean, you know, it's like, man, that's, you know, I don't think he's with us anymore. I think, I think he committed suicide. Damn. It's just, it's, life is tough, man, you know. He's like that's like uh, Colonel Abrams. Oh, why well, don't know you're gonna bring him up, man? Colonel Abrams. <laughs> I worked with a dude in California who on the air referred to him. He kept calling him Colonial Abrams. I'm like, who was named Colonial? Who do you know named Colonial? My God, use your brain, man. <laughs> who do you know? Uh, a lot of people named Colonel. There, there, there just is, right? There's a lot of people named Colonel, but I mean Colonial. Nobody named somebody Colonial, man. What's wrong with you, man? I told you I met him. Yeah, they kind of, I'm going to let. They are kind of a pity. But I met him, he was like, hey. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> he had, his little, had his little Colonel outfit on. Yeah. And, man. I told you, he had a song. I, I try to find this song, man. I, you've got, this is one of my St. Louis bits, but it was called Margot. I was in college and I liked it. But it was funny because he he was just ripping the English language apart. <laughs> like, oh, go. One day you'll be growing up. It was, it was just like, what? Well, you know, my wife told me that Shoshana said she listened to Lou Rawls one time. Uh, you'll never find. Yeah. And at the end, he starts riffing on At the end, it starts, you know, a little bit. And then he says, yes, you is, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I will confirm that. You sound right. It was like, yeah. and I, I had never heard that before. Yes, you is, baby. <laughs> I was like, huh? Huh? You know. Was, uh, R. Kelly has, you know, a string of them, as does Michael Jackson. Yeah. But I heard R. Kelly, um, <laughs> uh, the, he wrote the song for Whitney Houston, and I heard his raw version before she recorded. And she, he said something like, <laughs> Any day has come. <laughs> so, when you're like, huh? Wait a minute. And you always know, wonder, there's nobody there that's like, man, I think, I think your conjugation may be off. Yeah. But, but then when, when Whitney recorded it, it was correct. It so was I guess correct, someone so. did. That. So, but is it true that R. Kelly doesn't read very well? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. He, yeah. He, he doesn't read. Yeah, he doesn't read. He's written, he's written some of the most... Incredible Prolific, songs, yeah. You know, incredible songs. You just, yeah. Uh, well, you yeah, know. He, he's not much, of a, not much of a reader, but a hell of a writer. Yeah, well. So who has been the most disappointing celebrity you've ever met? The most disappointing? Did I have any stories in St. Louis? I don't think they have any stories. Um, well, I mean, when we were, we had Damon Wayans came by one time, and he didn't want to do any jokes, so he was saving him for the show. David, yeah, you want to be tough. David Williams. You know, David Allen Greer came by one time and he wanted to leave because he wanted to go antiquing. Remember that? It's like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. What? Antiquing? He, and he really does go antiquing. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. The Soulard, where's that? Where's the antique? The Soulard? Yeah, that's, something like, I don't know. I, somewhere around there. You yeah. know what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? The, the thing was funny 
and now he's he's doing well. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't bad, but it was funny. Like um, Boris Kojo was visit Boris Kojo and and um, Vivica Fox were in town, and they were talking about a play. And Boris was ripping Tyler Perry. Mm-mm. Now, at the time, Boris had that movie out that he did with radio, with, with TV One or something. Mm-hmm. It was terrible, terrible. Mm-hmm. You know, it was terrible. It was, you know, this thing he's done with Kevin Hart really has refreshed Boris's career. Yeah, it has. It has. And, sh- and shown his funny side. Because mm-hmm. he does not. He was not coming off. He was coming off as kind of a jerk. He was talking. He was criticizing Tyler Perry. And in this movie, he he was like then he was then was terrible. The movie did with the TV one, and he was saying here this was his beat. He said Tyler wanted him, you know, and it was a movie he did with Tyler. Remember he was in the movie, and so he said he said imagine you know Tyler wanted me to be this southern black guy, and I'm German. You're an actor, yeah, you know, right? <laughs> and it was like. You know, it was almost like the pretty girl syndrome. It was like, and everybody was just being courteous because it was almost like you almost wanted to say, "No offense, but nigga, please." <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm German. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, you're actor. You're yeah. playing a southern. Yeah. And I, I think in the movie he played a couple different characters, and you just like I, you, I was just sitting there like, "Are you sick? Are you really serious?" Oh, I know. And that was one. And then. I think I tore my drawers with drawers with uh, David Talbert. You you, yeah. you, you met him. In, yeah. He used to do plays. Yeah. Now he does movies. Yeah. David Talbert comes in with Morris Chestnut. So you know you know how we always do, well we did a lot of meet and greets. Um, and so you know in the meet and greets we had provided breakfast and you have like twenty five viewers or listeners there. And so David Talbert comes in. We had promoted. We had when we had twenty people out in the. You know, we usually do the show out in the cafeteria, and that's where we did our show, and we had the food and stuff. So Morris Chester was not aware. He was not aware of this. And he was like, uh, I don't have my makeup. You know, I, don't, I wasn't expecting this. So I was like, <laughs> are you serious? It was like, I, I chastised him on the air, not on the air, off the air. Uh-huh. But I basically was like, Basically, the people saw so the people saw them going to the studio, and they're all waiting. Oh my god! You know, and then he's he's thinking about not going out. Oh, because he doesn't have his makeup. Yeah, and I was just like, dude, I was just going. I kind of went off. I, you know, I kind of kind of cracking the fact, and I went in on him. And then David pulled me outside and was like, "You, dude, man, you know, you're killing me. You know, you're killing me. You know." You know, da, 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 da. Yeah. and I'm like, dude, you killing me? I got yeah. twenty yeah. people here who who won the chance to see, you know, uh, and he's he's and so I I, I shamed him in the I shamed him into doing it. <laughs> I was just like, you know, and so he did it begrudgingly. Man. But I think I tore my jaws with the David Talbot people. <laughs> Well played, Mark. We had a thing one time with Mary J. If people could meet Mary J. They had him at the radio station and stuff. There was like 20 of them. And then she just walked in the room. She goes, hey, everybody. She walked back out. That was it. Yeah. Mary yeah. was rough early on. <laughs> yeah. I told, you, I told you, I, you. You told me that. And I told you the one when in Charleston when, when she first came out. When, uh, you know, you remind, you remind me of her first single, I think, was in the movie. I think you remind me. With, you know, I Re- Real Love? The first thing. Real Love or? Yeah. Something from the first album. From the first album, and uh, um, she she refused to get out of the limo. So it's in Charleston, and she never got she she refused to get out of the limo mm-hmm. again. And it was like this was the this was the beginning of the the change in the industry because you know Tony when we were, when we were in early on it was the road guys would be a grown ass man, mm-hmm. and and the artists it wasn't no I'm not. I get out of limo. You can get your ass out of the limo. Right, right. It was like you know, they were, they were authority figures. They were old guys who've been in the game a long time, and the artists were kids. You know, then it changed where they got rid of the old guys, and it was kids, like people that are same age, their peers. And so the guy with the record company was like, "Yo, son, Mary won't get out the limo." <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, "What?" <laughs> like that, was, you know. We'll get her out the limo. Yeah. Oh, son. Yeah. And of course, he went on to be like president of something. 
But it's just amazing because I remember these guys were twenty something years old and and they didn't have the artists did whatever the hell they wanted to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so you know this was Charleston, this was Visions in South Carolina in Charleston, and she was a brand new artist, so they didn't really know who you are anyway. Right. So you know we waited and waited and waited and waited, and finally you know BJ started playing the music. Now the party's on. Here come Mary J. And so nobody cared at that point. At that point, it's over. So she just sat at a sat at a booth. <laughs> Drink your wine, lady. Drink your wine. Mary J. Blige is Mary J. Blige is here. People are like, well, I don't know who she is. <laughs> I saw um, Joe have a nervous breakdown at the club. Joe, <laughs> yeah, the singer so down at the uh, down on the you know, what, was, what was the spot down? You know, the live music down the, the on, landing. The landing. Oh, you were there. Yeah. What happened? Was like. He was like, huh? And just walked up to the <laughs> like, Joe? Joe? Oh, Joe! What happened? We'll be right back. We're going to see what happened. We'll be right back. <laughs> like, damn. Dude, when I worked in San Francisco, this was like in the 80s, Melissa Morgan, she did that Prince song, Do Me Baby. She yeah. was on tour to promote the album, right? Back then we had albums and CD and cassettes. It really wasn't CDs and stuff, right? And so she's at the radio station doing an interview. I was off the air. I did mornings. I was off the air. But I was hanging around. And uh, she's on the air with the midday guy. He's taking phone calls. And uh, this one guy calls up. He goes, Melissa. He goes, I just want to tell you, I love the album. He goes, I loved it so much I went and bought the cassette. So I had both. I didn't want to make a copy of it. I wanted you to get everything you deserve. And she goes, oh, that's so nice. He goes, you can't sing, bitch. <laughs> She went, she went, she went, oh, and she went back, she walked out and got in the limo, she wouldn't come out, man, she would not come out, she wouldn't come out, she was embarrassed and all that, and we, you know, they were trying to apologize, saying, hey, you know, live calls, it happens, and stuff like that, man, she, she's like, oh, oh my goodness, people, people like, you know, people, you know, people, 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 people try to be comedians, everybody wants to be a comedian, right, everybody wants to make their mark, so, one of those well, things, man. My most famous uh, interaction is on 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 YouTube. You can look it up. The Keisha Cole interview. If for those who haven't haven't uh, heard that, um, you know she came in and actually it was my it's my biggest viral thing. I think we had like you know fifty thousand or more hits. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, she didn't want to be there, and I just kind of did the big the big brother slash daddy kind of you know. We, hey, we love you. We want you to see, see if you put your best foot forward. And why are you blowing this opportunity? And mm-hmm. She actually was pretty, you know, she was like, well, sorry, you feel that way, sir. So kind of, you know, it was like one of those moments. So, you know, right before I got uh, fired, uh, it, was like, <laughs> it was one of, you know, so it was kind of cool. And it, was, it was one of the, one of the you know, when, when people started to notice the hits and stuff, you know, the social media started blowing up. I guess that was about 2000, yeah, 2008. Mm-hmm. So it's on YouTube if you if uh, okay yeah if I'll, I'll get it. You were going to check it out. I will link to it, man. So we're gonna wrap up, man. Two dads, six daughters. Uh, it's two fathers with three daughters each talking about their life with their daughters and stuff that's going on in the world. So, uh, what's going on with you, man? Anything else, man? Man, it's still waiting to hear what's up with this job. Yeah. yeah. Um, huh? Yeah. You know, other than that, uh, I am looking for employment. Uh, a strapping stevedore mm-hmm. willing to unload at the dock if you're looking for someone to help you out. Now, you he does host a radio show on WHUR in D.C., 96.3. You can listen on the Internet. He's on, you, you and Troy do it together on Saturday nights. From, yeah, 8 to midnight. And then yeah. We're on Sirius XM, Channel 141, uh, 8 to midnight every night, uh, the hang suite. You're on every night on Sirius? Yeah, me and Troy, we, we, we split it. Now, I do Monday, Tuesday. He does, I do Monday, Tuesday, Friday. He does Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, okay. Uh, on the Sirius XM Channel 141. Yeah, uh, HR Voices. Oh, very cool. I did, I did not know that. You did, you did not know that? I you was not, not aware, aware of that. that. I was not aware of that. I did not know that. So, well, very cool, man. So, well, the best to everybody, man. Uh, next week, we'll do man. it again, man. And so next week, when's Olivia going to college? Oh, she's got another couple, three weeks to go, man. So Okay. Yeah. We have to have a party. Yeah, she don't move in until the 21st. Of September? Of uh, August. That's coming quick, Dad. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. girls are going to the girls are going to see their their play aunt in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, that's week. right. You still been doing your push-ups and sit-ups, man? 
man. I've been trying to get ready for the, that week, me and Allison. Yeah, man, like a second honeymoon, about, man. Your him be shakes every night. Your him be shakes, <laughs> and uh, I've been icing down, icing you know, icing the icing the kids. Yeah, getting yeah. them ready. Yeah, well, as you know, I need a little bit more ice than a normal person. So you know, <laughs> and leaving and leaving it alone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> leaving it alone. Get the build up going. Yeah. Build the system up. I remember you and Monica used to call me Big Mounds. <laughs> yes. Tony couldn't wear, Tony, it was illegal for Tony to wear gaucho. <laughs> illegal. Oh, no. All right, no, man. No bueno, sir. <laughs> no bueno right. on the huevos. That's right. All right, man. So next week, man, two, two dads, six daughters. All right, brother. Take care.